preaching through Psalms, and uh, praise the Lord, uh, chapter number 23, we've been looking at in the New Testament, the Lord Jesus Christ is portrayed as the shepherd of his sheep, and we see in uh, uh, the Bible, he is portrayed with uh, three different pronouns to describe that shepherd, and the first is the good shepherd. We see that in John chapter number 10, verses 11 through 15. He's portrayed as the good shepherd, and we see that that is also paralleled in chapter number 22, and that good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. And we see that in Psalm chapter number 22, a very good description of the death of Christ. And then also in Psalm chapter number 23, we see the portrayal of the great shepherd, which is mentioned in Hebrews chapter number 13, verses 20 and 21. And that great shepherd is that great shepherd that is risen from the dead, and he is guiding his sheep and providing for his sheep. And we see that in Psalm chapter number 23. And we also see in Psalm chapter number 24, which is where we'll be at after we get done with 23, is we see the chief, the chief, the, not cheap, he's not cheap, amen, the chief shepherd, which is mentioned in 1 Peter chapter number 5, verses 1 through 4. And he is that King of kings and Lord of lords that is coming again to receive us unto his own, amen, and looking forward to that wonderful day. So Psalm chapter number 23, verses 1, the Bible says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord for how long? Ever. Amen. That's a wonderful thing, and I'm looking forward to that day as well. And so as we've been looking, we finished up verse number three last week, and we talked about how that uh, when the Lord is our shepherd, I shall not want. He provides our physical needs, we see in verse number two, but he also provides our spiritual needs, we see in verse number three. And when we get into verse number four, God assures us that we have nothing to fear, nothing to be afraid of. And I'm so thankful that no matter what's going on in the world, what's going on in my personal life, what's going on in the church, I have nothing to be afraid of. The Lord is my shepherd. And I shall not want. And I don't need to be afraid. Amen. I want you to notice we see in verses 1, 2, and 3, we see David here talking about the Lord as his shepherd. We see he says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And then when we get into verse number 4, there's a transition of the way he is talking about God. And now, in verse number 4, he is talking to God. Look at what it says. It says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. And so he goes from talking about God, and now he's talking to God. And we see in this passage, we see here, I want to notice just the first point of verse number four. We're only going to get into half of this verse tonight. And so, uh, but uh, we will be looking at David's courage, David's company, and then David's comfort. And so tonight we're just going to look at his courage tonight. And so as we look at this, we see here, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you for your goodness and grace. I pray you'd fill me and use me, guide and direct my words and thoughts. And I pray, dear God, that you would touch hearts tonight in a special way. I pray, dear God, that you'd open hearts and minds to receive what you have for them. And Father, I pray, dear God, if there's one here tonight that's not truly saved, I pray tonight would be that night of salvation in that individual's life. Lord, help us to grow. Help us to grow in the grace of the laws of the Lord Jesus Christ. Help us to love you more today than we ever have before. In Jesus' precious holy name, we pray the power of his blood we please. Amen. So we see here David's courage. I want you to notice the first thing. Notice his pace. Notice his pace. Look at this. It says, Yea, though I what? Walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Now, I don't know about you, but sometimes when people get afraid, what do they do? 
run. Amen. They take off. Amen. They run. And I can remember as a kid getting scared playing hide and seek and boom, I'm heading home. And I forget about playing hide and seek. And I remember running scared to death of the shadows. And so, so many times when people become fearful, they make the, uh, so many mistakes. Listen, the last thing God wants his children to do is live in fear. God doesn't want us to live that way. God wants us to live in confidence and in courage because of who our God is. Amen. If uh, in fear, people often run and they run from truth. They run from things that they shouldn't be running from. And David, as you notice in here, he says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. He never changed his pace. He never took off running. He never feared in this time. And he maintained a steady pace. Why? Because he was confident in his God. He continued to walk. So we see David's pace. Galatians chapter number 5, verse number 25. The Bible says, If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. And we are to remember that, listen, when we walk, we're more mindful about where we step. We're more mindful about the direction that we go in. When we get in a hurry and we start running through life, and I understand there's a, a point in time where we do run as Christians and things like that. I understand that. But when we walk in this matter of our life, listen, we're more careful about our steps. Amen. And we have to be careful not to let life run away with us and so ephesians chapter number five verse number two and walk in love as christ also hath loved us and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to god for a sweet smelling savor and so god wants us to walk in love as christ also hath loved past tense us how did he love us on an old rugged cross amen death burial and resurrection and so we see yea though i walk so we see his pace but also notice the place the place of his walking we see here in this passage it says here he says yea though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death the place is a valley and in valleys in the bible it's talking about the lowest place a person can, can get the lowest point of life. And the lowest point of life represented here in this passage is death. There's no lower place to get in life than being on the precipice of death. There's no other lower place. And there's no other greater evil than death itself. Are you with me? And so you take lost people. If they die, they're in trouble. And so that is the lowest place a person can get is that place called death. But praise be to God. David said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And so notice the place, it's a valley, it's the lowest point in life. But then also notice the point. I want you to notice not only his pace, not only the place, but also notice the point of this. Notice what it says here. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the what? Shadow of death. The shadow of death. Now there's a point to this. Now to the child of God, death is but a shadow. Now to those that are not saved, well, death is a whole lot more than just a shadow. It's a reality and it's a fearful thing. But death to a believer, there's no need to fear. It is just a shadow. And you know what? Listen, I, can, I could punch Jeff with my fist, probably a mistake, but I, I could punch Jeff with my fist. But you know what I can't do? Is I can't punch him with the shadow of my fist. Are you with me? The shadow of a sword can never cut anybody. Only the sword can cut. Are you with me? But too many times people are afraid of the shadow. How many times have you watched a cartoon where there's a big shadow comes up and then it ends up being this little tiny person? <laughs> and there's nothing to be afraid of. Well, that's truly the way that death is for the child of God. There is nothing, period, to be afraid of. Death is not a bad thing. And so as we look at this, for the child of God, it's a very good thing. And so notice the point. The shadow, hey, listen, it cannot hurt. And the truth of the matter is this. There are no shadows without light. And so on the other side of the shadow, there's what? Light, amen. And so praise God for shadows. Turn over to Luke chapter number 1 with me. I want you to, we're going to take a journey through the scriptures. Luke chapter number 1. Uh, Psalm chapter number 23, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. David had figured some things out. Luke chapter number 1 in your Bibles, if you would please. Luke chapter number 1. 
Death is not to be feared by the Christian. Luke chapter number 1. And we're going to pick it up. This is a long chapter, amen. Always when I'm doing my Bible reading and I get to, to this section of the New Testament, and I always... I always think, okay, I've got to plan because it's going to take me a lot longer to get through these eight chapters in the New Testament because I read Matthew 25 to Luke chapter number four on the same day of the month, every month. And uh, when I get to this passage and I'm like, man, there is 70 or 80 verses in chapter number one of Luke and they're not even short verses either. And so when you're going through this and look at verse number 77 with me. This is talking about John the Baptist, and he was a, a vessel chosen by God for a particular purse to pave the way for the Lord Jesus Christ, and uh, he is prophesied of in the Old Testament in several different passages. And so verse number 77, look at it with me, and it says, "...to give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins." Through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us. That day spring is talking about Jesus. To give what? Light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of what? Death. To guide our feet into the way of what? peace. Amen. And so what a wonderful truth that is. I mean, there's light on the other side of the shadow. Turn over to Isaiah chapter number nine with me. Isaiah chapter number nine. I want you to see a few verses about this. Isaiah chapter number nine. Isaiah chapter number nine. Isaiah chapter number nine. Isaiah has 66 chapters in it and each one of those chapters are, are parallel to the books of the bible and the split is right at uh 39 uh the chapter number 40 is a picture of matthew starting into the new new testament it's a really amazing book it really is it's kind of like a miniature bible inside the bible and so uh, chapter number nine look at verse number two the people that walked in darkness have seen a what great light that they dwell in the land of the shadow of death. Upon them hath the light what? Amen. Amen. If you know Jesus Christ, your Savior, say amen right there. Because the light has shined upon you. Amen. And so that shadow of death is upon this earth. When G Adam and Eve fell in the garden, death passed upon all men. For all have what? Sinned. And so we see in this passage, we see here this matter of the shadow of death. To the child of God, it is not a scary thing. As a matter of fact, the Apostle Paul, he kind of invites it. And we're going to get into that in a little bit, but we'll, I don't want to run ahead of myself. Go to Acts chapter number 26. Acts chapter number 26. I want you to see these passages. Acts chapter number 26. This is a great passage. I love this. This is a great verse. Acts chapter number 26. And we're looking at verse number 18. Acts chapter number 26, verse number 18. Apostle Paul's giving his testimony to Agrippa, King Agrippa, and uh, we're getting ready to get into this here pretty soon in the book of Acts on Sunday morning, and he's given his testimony, and he's been given a calling unto the Gentiles, and this is what he says in verse number 18, this is what his calling was to do, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to what? Light, and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by what? Faith. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And so a person who thinks they're going to get there because they're a pretty good guy, they're going to hell. Yeah. And so the only way you're getting to heaven is because Jesus was a really good guy. That is in me. Look at what it says. So turning them from darkness to light to give them salvation. Amen. And so what a wonderful truth. Now turn over to uh, Ephesians chapter number 5 with me. Ephesians chapter number 5, just a few pages after Acts. Ephesians chapter number 5, 1 and 2 Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians <clears throat> chapter number 5. This is a powerful passage of Scripture, man. I love the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter number 5, look at verse number 8 when you get there. This could go right along with uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. For if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, behold, all things are become new. Verse number 8, for ye were sometimes what? 
darkness. But now ye are light in the who? Lord, do what? Walk as children of light. And so from darkness to light. Amen. And that shadow of death is just a shadow to the child of God. That's all it is. There's nothing to fear. Amen. And so look at 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5 with me. 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5. This is a great passage too. 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5 verses 4 and 5. Notice the point. Notice the point. The shadow of death. Nothing to fear. Amen. The shadow of death. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Lowest point in life. Oh, and it's a shadow. But there's light that casts that shadow. <clears throat> Verse number four, look at it with me. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that ye, that day should overtake you as a thief. And now Paul is talking to the church of Thessalon like uh, Thessalonia, and uh, these people have been going through some serious, serious persecution. And uh, Paul is encouraging and strengthening them and not to be afraid of those that have died before. You see in chapter 4, talked about the rapture from 13 on down to 18. He says, wherefore, comfort you one another with these words. You get into chapter number 5, and he's starting to go down to give some more encouragement. And then towards the end of the chapter, he gives a bunch of bullet points. I love bullet points, amen. And so, and it says here, ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of night nor of darkness. And so we see in this passage, we're the children of light, amen. And the shadow of death has no power over us. And so we see, we notice his pace, we notice the place, we notice the point. And then I want you to notice his power. Go back over to Psalm chapter number 23. Psalm chapter number 23, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. That is a definite statement. He is not afraid of any evil, no evil whatsoever. And as a child of God, listen, if, if death is really a good thing for the child of God, would you agree going to heaven is going to be a pretty awesome thing? Death is a good thing for a child of God. Now, I'm not volunteering for... Let's, let's all drink the Kool-Aid, amen? No, we're not Jim Jones, amen? And so listen, the bottom line is, is we don't believe in suicide or getting to heaven quicker than we're supposed to. God will take us when He's ready. And so, but the point is this. There's nothing to fear. There's nothing to be afraid of. And so if we're not to be afraid of death, then what is there to be afraid of? Are you with me? Because death is the, the supposedly scariest thing a human has, to, has, is afraid of dying. Not me, amen. Man, I'll tell you what, it's an incredible thing. Death is not real to the Christian. Death has no power over us. Romans chapter number 6, verse number 9, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. And listen, the Bible says that when we're saved, we are in Christ. And if we're in Christ and death doesn't have dominion over him, guess who else death doesn't have dominion over? It doesn't have dominion over us either, amen? Turn over to 1 Corinthians chapter number 15. We're going to look at a bunch of verses. And so it's one of my favorite things to do is to turn around in the Bible and let the Bible do the preaching, amen? 1 Corinthians chapter number 15, 1 Corinthians chapter number 15 the shadow of death. Shadows cannot hurt people. They can't. But if a person allows a shadow to cause them to be afraid, they can end up hurting themselves because of the fear that they feel. Are you with me? And death, the shadow of death, has no, there's no reason to be afraid of it. And listen, the truth of the matter is, it's just like the devil. I'm not afraid of the devil. I'm not afraid of the world. I'm more afraid of myself and my stupidity than I am of anything else. You know, and of course I'm fearful of God because I know that when I do stupid things, God does chastise me, amen? <laughs> and so, and that's the truth of it. But when we look at this passage in 1 Corinthians chapter number 15, I love this passage. Look at verse number 54. Verse number 54. And this, this chapter is just right packed full of good stuff. It starts with the gospel. And it ends with a rapture, amen? <laughs> it's pretty awesome stuff. And so look at uh, verse number 54. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, our society is just ate up with immortality. 
these superheroes and all of these different things and and whatnot uh, people that can never die and and the thor the son of thunder well i know the son of thunder his name wasn't thor amen it was john and his brother james and they were called the sons of thunder <laughs> so anyways listen and so uh, uh then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in what O death where is thy what O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through who? Our Lord Jesus Christ. And since we've got the victory in Jesus Christ, this is what Paul says. He says, therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So serve him. Hey, listen, you're not going to lose. You're going to gain. Give it all to Jesus. Amen. I'm telling you something right now. You can't go wrong by doing that. And that's what Paul said in this passage under the leading of the Holy Spirit of God. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know, your labor is not in vain in the Lord. It's not empty. It's not void. It does have purpose. The fear of dying cripples people in this life. It should never cripple us as the children of God. It should truly be a welcome gift. Paul made this statement. Turn over to Philippians chapter number 1 with me, just a couple of pages over towards the back of the book, right after the book of Ephesians. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, chapter number one. You got to see what he says here. The Apostle Paul, you know, as we look at uh, the book of Acts, and, and I, I don't know, we've been talking about how the, Paul, the Apostle Paul disobeyed the Spirit. He disobeyed uh, 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 some of the brethren, some of the prophets, and different things like that. And he just, he wanted to go to Jerusalem. He was going to do it, even though God didn't want him to be there. He ignored God's warnings and all of those things. He got himself in a bad place. But you know what Paul did? Paul lived his life right on the edge of death all the time. You want to know why? Because death was an invitation for him. It was like death. He was, he wanted, he literally, he was like, I'm ready to die. Anytime you want me to die, Lord, I am ready to come be with you. Look at what it says in Philippians chapter number one. Look at what it says. Philippians chapter number one, verse number 21. Did you know what? God just wouldn't let that rascal die. And so verse number 21, listen, I preached the message of, I don't remember what year it was, but it was at the end of the year. It was like a New Year's type thing. And I preached a message called Unstoppable. And literally, as a child of God, if you're saved in here, say amen. You literally are unstoppable. I don't care what Satan does. You're not, listen, God's got a plan for your life, and you're not going to die until God says you're going to die. Amen? And that's the truth of it. Look at verse number 21. Now, you get out of God's will and start messing around and doing some stupid stuff, you, you can get dead real quick. But anyways, listen, as long as you're following Jesus, you're indestructible. Look at verse number 21. And even if you do die out of God's will, you still go to heaven. You're still indestructible. Do you get what I'm saying? And so now that's not the way I want to go. I want to die in God's will. Now, look at verse number 21. For me to live is what? Christ and to die is what Paul looked at death like it was gain it was an increase it was it was profit to him to die he was willing to die he said over in chapter number 21 he says uh, to the brethren and we preached this passage he was getting ready to go down to Jerusalem and his brethren they were crying and we be don't go don't go and he had just got told you're going to get bound by the Jews in Jerusalem. And he said, do you, what do you mean to break my heart? I don't only really look to get boundaries, but I'm willing to die for the cause of Jesus Christ. This is what he is saying. I am ready to go. I'm ready to die right now. No problem. And so as we look at this and we see in this passage, Paul is inviting death in his life. He's living on that edge. Philippians, look at verse number 23 of the same chapter. It says, for I am in a straight betwixt two having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is what? Far better. He said, I want to be. That's far better, amen, to be with my Lord, to be in His presence in heaven. It is far better. Now, of course, I don't know about you, but I long for the rapture to happen. I long to get out of here. If I heard the trumpet tonight, I would be all kinds of happy, amen? And man, I'm telling you right. Listen, I kind of believe this too. 
Uh, this is just off the side throw. I don't know. You know how I am, rabbit trails. But anyways, I'm telling you, I think when we get raptured out, this body is going up. Now, it's going to get transformed, the Bible says, in the air. That's going to happen up there. Now, what I think is, is if the rapture were to happen right now, these ceiling tiles, this is not going to stop me. Amen? It's going to rip holes right through this roof. And I think that there's going to, whoever's left, you're going to have a lot of work to do on the roof. Amen? And so, anyways, look at this now. I'm telling you right now, it's going to be an amazing thing. And all these, you know, the movies and stuff like that, all of a sudden the people just kind of disappear out of the seats. I don't think that's how it's going to happen. I think if they're on a plane and the pilot gets raptured out, the, the cockpit's going to have a hole in it up through the roof, and it's done for, amen? There is no not landing that plane afterwards unless the pilots aren't saved. It, it, did you know, I, where was that article? You were telling me about that. What, what airline? They're starting to not hire pilots that are Christians. Chew on that for a while, amen? <laughs> I'm telling you, <laughs> stop and chew on that for a while, man. I'll tell you what, when I heard that, I was like, "Woo, we're getting close, amen. We're getting ready to get out of here. Oh, oh so that's what it is. Okay. There's got to be a non-Christian and a Christian. <laughs> so the other person, Woo. what does that tell you? The world does know. The world does know. And so when we look at this and all of these things, listen, notice the power that David had. He had power because he did not fear death. Paul did not fear death. It was just a shadow to him. That's all it was. It's a transitioning point to a much better life. And so turn over to Isaiah chapter number 57. Isaiah chapter number 57. Man, this is great stuff. We don't have to be afraid of death. Amen. It's a wonderful thing. Isaiah chapter number 57. It's amazing how the Bible is so perfectly in unity. As I mentioned many times before, the Bible from Genesis to Revelation is a unity of truth. That's what the Bible is. There's no contradictions in it whatsoever. And if you think there's a contradiction, you are wrong and the Bible is right. Can I get a witness? It's your lack of understanding. It's not a contradiction. There is no such thing as a contradiction in the Word of God. Isaiah chapter number 57, look at verse number 1 and 2. The righteous perisheth, and no man layeth it to heart. And merciful men are taken away, none considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. Are you with me? Yeah. Taken away from the evil to come. What does the Bible say? It says that we're saved from the wrath to come. Amen. And so, uh, Old Testament passage talking about a New Testament truth. Amen. Look at it. He shall enter into peace. They shall rest in their beds, each one walking in his uprightness. And so as we look at this and we see this, man, it is an incredible truth that, listen, when the rapture happens, listen, whether it be the rapture, listen, we're not going through the tribulation period. There's people that think they're going to go through half of the tribulation period. There's the mid-tribbers and there's the post-tribbers. They think some people are going to get raptured out. Some people that didn't please God as much in their life are going to have to go through the tribulation. That's a bunch of hogwash, amen? The simple fact of the matter is, is when Jesus... Jesus comes, he's coming to get his bride. And he's not just going to take an arm and a leg. He's taking the whole bride. Amen. Can I get a witness? He, and the marriage supper of the Lamb's taking place up in heaven during that seven-year tribulation. There's going to be the judgment seat of Christ and the marriage supper of the Lamb. And I'm pretty sure that every, every dish at the table is going to be real good. Amen. Hallelujah. And so as we look at this, we see this. this is a wonderful truth. Amen. Death. We have no reason to fear death. Romans chapter number 8, go there with me. Romans chapter number 8, you know this mountain peak of the, of the scriptures. All of the Bible is good, amen. All of the Bible is good. And uh, some, obviously, certain passages, it, when God speaks to you through those passages at different times in your life, of course, it means a little bit more special to you. And look at verse number 35. We'll read all the way to the end of the chapter. I love this. You could really just start in verse number 1 and read the whole thing. It's just all encouragement. Verse number 35, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Shall any of these things separate us from the love of Christ? The answer to that question is no. And now some of those things, they don't look real good, do they? I don't know about you, but I don't really like tribulation. I don't really care for distress and persecution or famine. 
or nakedness or peril or sword. I don't like any of those things, amen? And the simple fact of the matter is, is some of those things come into people's lives as Christians. As it is written, for thy sake we are what? killed all the day long we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter and so there's talking about here listen just because you're a christian doesn't mean you're going to escape the problems of life that you're going to escape being murdered for the cause of jesus christ hey listen when i look over in the book of revelation it talks about in the 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 saints that had their heads chopped off and they're under the altar crying out to god for revenge can i get a witness right there amen and so it's not wrong to desire revenge <laughs> amen they're crying for it you know what god's gonna give them their revenge too and so people oh god would never do that he's god of love yeah okay you go ahead and you die in your sin because you hate god and you will not accept what god has given you as a wonderful wonderful gift of eternal life and my bible says the wrath of god abideth on them you go over to John chapter number 3. It's not a pretty story, amen? And so listen, God is a God of judgment. You look in the Old Testament and look at the way He treated some of those heathen nations that attacked His people. He wiped, He said, kill them all. Don't just kill the, 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 the men, the women, the children. Wipe them all out because if you leave a one, they're going to continue to be a problem. Are you with me? Wipe out, not only that, wipe out all their animals too. I mean, that's brutal. But that's, hey, listen, God is a perfect judge. Yes, he's perfect in his love, but he's also perfect in his judgment and justice. And they are perfectly balanced amongst each other. Not because of the way we think, but because of who he is. And if we don't agree with it, you're wrong. He's right. Can I get a witness? And so anyways, preaching away. And as it is written, they're all, nay, in all these things, we are more than what? Conquerors through him that loved him. We are counted sheep as the slaughter. And we're a conqueror? Yes, because even in death we're victorious because we have heaven as our home. Can I get a witness? And one day when the rapture happens, hey, listen, this body goes into the grave. And Paul talks about, listen, to die is what? Gain. Amen? And I've always thought this until today. I started studying. I was like, whoa, wait a minute here. I've said to no, I, maybe I do want to die, amen? Maybe I don't want to just be alive until the rapture because to die is gain, amen? And listen, you know what? I get six more feet of a trip than those people that are alive. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so as we look at this, to experience death and the rewards that are in that. Hmm, interesting to think about. And so as we look at this, we see in this passage, we go on to read, For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I mean, is that not powerful or what? Listen, if all we had, if all we had was this passage of Scripture right here, if that's all we had, isn't this enough to want to give your all for Jesus? Look at what He's done for us and look at how uh, really unstoppable that He has made us. Why would we not want to give our all to Him? Why would we not? When we hear a commandment in the Bible that kind of cuts us the wrong way, we ought to turn around and let Him cut us the other way too, amen? Instead of being stubborn about it and letting Him have His way because He's so faithful to us and He's so good to us. And when we get to heaven, I don't know about you, but I want to hear those words. Amen. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Man, I want to hear those words so bad. Man, it's an amazing thing that we stop and think about. It is awesome. Turn over to 2 Corinthians chapter number 5 with me. 2 Corinthians chapter number 5. Whew. I didn't preach Sunday, you can tell. 2 Corinthians chapter number 5. Look at verse number 1 with me. For we know that if our earthly house of this type, talking about your body, were dissolved, we have a building of God in a house not made with what? Eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan, earnestly what? Desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from where? If so be that we being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that we 
would be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up of what? Life. Can I get a witness right there? Amen. And I don't know about you, but I've had some groans this last week. And I'm here to tell you, I'm looking forward to the day. I'm never going to have another cold again. My ears are never going to be plugged up again, amen. My eyes are never going to itch. And I don't know how eyeballs can itch, but, man, they sure do sometimes. I'm like, what in the world? Man, I'm telling you, I'm so excited to be able to get to heaven and have a perfect body and float around with my little harp and play around. Amen. It's going to be great, amen. It's going to be a wonderful time to be in heaven. Man, we got an awesome God. He is so powerful, amen. Look at verse number 6 of the same chapter there. Verse number 6, Therefore, we are always confident... Knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. Now slip on down to verse number eight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be, and willing rather. This is what Paul wanted. Are you with me? (laughs) Willing rather. Listen, to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. And I love the way God words that. You know, so many times you look at the different versions, they mess things up. And is a joining conjunction that makes them one in the same. Are you with me? That word and is so vitally important. Every word is important. And it says in this passage, and when I used to read that, I used to be like, man, what? that doesn't even sound right. And then one day, God's like, and I was like, oh, and to be absent is to be present. And it is a conjunction that ties them to an instantaneous time and moment. Are you with me? It is incredible to stop and think about the importance of every word. I'm glad we got an every word Bible. Every word of God is pure, as it says over in Proverbs chapter number 30. And so as we look at this, we see in this passage, man, what an incredible truth. Go over to Revelation chapter number 14. You got to see this as good stuff. Revelation chapter number 14. Revelation chapter number 14. Look at verse number 13 with me. This is good stuff. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, blessed are the dead. Man, that guy is blessed to be dead. Can I get a witness right there? Blessed are the dead which die where? In the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the who? This is the Spirit saying this. And now if the Spirit of God says, Blessed are the dead that die in the Lord, you can mark it down. Dead people who die in the Lord are blessed people. Can I get a witness? That's good stuff. That they may rest from their labors and their works do what? Follow them. Listen, the things you do for God, they are going to follow you to heaven. Can I get a witness? Amen. There are things, listen, you know, I read a book one time, uh, Only One Thing. I think it was called One Thing. Only One Thing You Can Take to, only one thing you can take to Heaven. And the emphasis behind that book was, was souls. And I get that. But that's not entirely true. Because the things you invest in heaven and the labor you do for God, in the work of God, in the service of God, when you pray, guess what? He keeps every one of your prayers in a vial. Every tear you shed with God is kept in a vial. Can I get a witness? It's in the book of Revelation. You see it, amen? Every single one. Not one single tear that you have shed, God has lost. Not one single sorrow. Not one. Listen, every single prayer is there. He's got it all recorded, amen? I'm here to tell you something right now. It's just kind of like, like uh, uh, the, 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 listen, the love letters that I wrote to my wife. Listen, she keeps all those silly things, amen? And listen, I'm here to tell you. I guarantee you she's lost a few. That rascal. And boy, I'll tell you, but not God. God never loses a single prayer. When you talk to him and tell him, hey, listen, every word you say to him is important to him. He doesn't miss a bit of it. He's not like, you know, when you're talking to your significant other and all of a sudden it's like, are you listening to me? And they're like off in Lulu land somewhere. <laughs> God never does that. Amen. He never does that. It's an incredible thing. We have an awesome God. And man, I'm telling you something right now. It's amazing. 
He didn't fear death because death is nothing to be afraid of for the child of God. Nothing to be afraid of. Ah, man, there's so much. Paul, throughout his life, seemed to invite death. He desired to be with the Lord. He lived on the edge. Go to 2 Timothy chapter number 4 with me. 2 Timothy chapter number 4. This is one of my favorite passages. 1 2 Timothy and Titus are my favorite books in the Bible. That's because they're written to preachers by a preacher. 2 Timothy chapter number 4, picking it up in verse number 4. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Sadly, too many churches are more about story time than they are about Bible time. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. For I, this is the Apostle Paul speaking, for I am now ready to be what? Offered. And the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth. There is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. And so listen, I'm here to tell you something right now. Paul lived his life on the edge, and when he got to the end of his life, he knew when he was dying. He didn't die as an old man, but he knew it was his time. He was going to be uh, martyred by the Nero, uh, uh, the the Roman emperor at the time. And so Paul lived his life this way. When you go through the book of Acts and see his travels, he preached knowing that he was going to get persecuted. He did things. He went to Jerusalem knowing that he could uh, possibly die there and all of these different things, willing to die there because he lived his life on the edge. And the truth of the matter is, is Paul had a good grasp of this fact. He wasn't going to die until God was done with him. And listen, each and every one of us as a child of God, each and every one of us has a calling in our life. And God has called us to carry the gospel to a lost and dying world. And while we're busy doing that job, listen, you are unstoppable. And the time when God has for you, that's the time you'll go. And listen, I'm here to tell you, death is nothing to fear. And if you don't have to fear death, then what really do we have to be afraid of? What is, what is greater than death? And so the Bible says, in over in the book of Luke, it talks about how that we shouldn't uh, uh, fear, uh, the fear of man bringeth a snare. It talks about that, I believe, in Proverbs. And it says in, in the book of Luke, it talks about how that uh, uh, we shouldn't fear a man which can kill the body, but we should fear God which can kill the body and soul in hell fire. And so as we look at this and we see in this passage, and if you're saved in here, say amen. amen. You don't have to fear that. There's no reason to be afraid, and we don't have to be afraid. For the child of God, there is no evil we should be afraid of. Go to Romans chapter number 8, and we're going to close it up with these few verses real quick. Romans chapter number 8. I want you to see some verses. Romans chapter number 8. Look with me at verse number 15. Verse number 15. For ye have not received the spirit of what? Again to fear. Now bondage is talking about the bondage of sin to eternal hell fire. But ye have received the spirit of what? Adoption. Whereby we cry... Abba, Father. Now, adoption is not like you think it is. The doctrine of adoption is not talking about like we're adopting kids into our family. That is not what this is talking about. And you'll see the understanding of that a little bit further on. You just read down through there, do your own research. But what it says is basically the adoption is this matter of sonship. It's becoming of age and having the legal right to handle the father's business. That's adoption. And it's specifically talking about the adoption of the body where we get our brand new body. 
it's talking about the rapture when we get a brand new body. And you'll see that scroll on down through there. You can see in verse number 21, 22, and 23, I believe is where it's at. And you'll see that matter of adoption. That is what adoption is talking about. And so as we look at this and we see in this passage in 8.15, we've not, been, we've not been taken back into the spirit of bondage again to fear. We have nothing to fear. Amen. And so 2 Timothy chapter number 1, verse number 7, the Bible says, But God hath not given us a spirit of what? fear but of love and of power and of a sound mind amen we have no reason to be afraid go to hebrews chapter number two with me hebrews chapter number two going to close it up with a few verses here that talk about this matter of fear we have nothing to be afraid of as a child of god we have no reason to be afraid amen fear death really honestly we should be inviting it man come on rapture let's go let's get out of here amen god if you want to take me out tomorrow i'm ready to go amen hallelujah glory to god hebrews chapter number two look at verse number 15 and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to what bondage and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage what is it talking about people that are unsaved live in a fear of death they're afraid to die. And listen, I'm here to tell you something right now. Listen, as a child of God, we have no reason to be afraid. There's nothing to fear. And so when we look at this and we see in this passage in verse number 15, it was to deliver them. And you look at this passage, back it up to verse number 9. Man, I preached a message out of this passage, man, boy, I'll tell you. Verse number 9. Let's start part number 2 of the message. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but we see who? Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels in the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for how many men? Every man. That's not just some people. He died for all people. The atonement's not limited to a certain few. Hey, listen, the atonement is for anybody who will accept Jesus Christ as their Savior. God will wash away their sins. For whosoever what will may come. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Listen, anybody can be saved if they'll call on the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not a certain group of special people that God has chosen or elected. That is the inappropriate teaching of election and predestination. Listen, the elect are those who choose to get saved. And they become elect. Those who are predestined, and what are they predestined to be? The Bible says predestination is not a place, but it's a person. And it talks about being predestined to be conformed to the image of Christ. Romans chapter number 8. And so as we look at this, this matter is incredible stuff. 1 John chapter number 4, go there with me. 1 John chapter number 4. 1 John chapter number 4. And this is the final swing of the hammer with the final nail that will sink it into the coffin, amen. This, this kills it right here. This does the job. This completely, it just totally seals the deal, amen. This casket is sealed and closed and done. The topic is now completed. Look at it with me. Yeah, come on. Verse number 18, look at it. There is no fear in what, but perfect what? Love casteth out what? Because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in what? We love him because he first what? And he's not given us a spirit of fear. And I don't know of a more perfect love than the love of Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. There is no fear in love, and perfect love casteth out fear. Listen, if you're saved in here today, I hope you know that God loves you. God loves you. God loves you from the bottom of your feet to the top of your head. Amen. He even loves the hairs that fell out a while ago. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, God loves you. And listen, I'm telling you, that perfect love casts out fear. There is no reason to be afraid. No reason to fear. You don't have to worry because God is faithful. Just trust Him. Live for Him. One step at a time. One day at a time. Take no thought for the moral. For the moral will take thought for itself. You just worry about living for God today. Can I get a witness? We see David's courage. I will not be afraid of the shadows 
for the light that cast them out. Can I get a witness? Because the light that cast them out is the Lord Jesus Christ. When we get to heaven, the Bible says in the end of the book of Revelation that there'll need be no need of an S-U-N because the S-O-N is the light thereof. Can I get a witness? We have an awesome God. The pace, the place, the point, and the power. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Father, we sure do love you. We thank you for your goodness and grace. I pray you bless now this invitation. In Jesus' precious holy name we pray. The power of his blood we plead. Amen. Every head bowed, every eye closed. If you know 100% for sure you're going to heaven,